especially the world as it's being run right now. And then, of course, one thing that this world system that is being run right now endorses is a lying tongue. Praise the Lord. And so we have been taught, we have been warned by scripture says, you are in the world, we are in the world, we are not of this world, and we should not conform ourselves to the standard of this world. If the standard of this world is to lie, God is saying, you, my children, you are in this world. Do not conform yourself to lying as a standard. Praise the Lord. So, and lying is a big one. And even in the book of Revelation, you see the Bible says that, and all liars shall what? <laughs> they will not, and they will burn in the lake of fire. But that will not be your portion. That will not be my passion in the mighty name of Jesus. So, so now let's go forward. So the next topic, which is lesson 21, this morning is called silence can be golden. Praise the Lord. And uh, this is a very important one. And you know, I, when I was when we were doing the review as teachers yesterday, and even this morning, you know, I, I mean. I, 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 I just saw some part of it that really was pointing, accusing finger at me. Praise the Lord. And uh, I was trying to talk to my children this morning. And then my, and I, immediately I was talking to them. My wife was listening. She was listening. And the moment I said, I'm not exempted from what I'm saying. I said, hey. <laughs> So she just quickly jumped on me, knowing fully well that I'm trying to talk to them about something that I'm, uh, what kind of looks like my own weak area. Praise the Lord. And we'll get there. We'll get there. I just want to put that out there. But the point I'm trying to make is that this is a lesson that every one of us should be able to see ourselves in and be able to learn something and be ready to do whatever it takes to correct it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Memory verse, James chapter 3, verse 2. Let's take it together at the count of three. One, two, three. For in many things we offend all. If any man offends not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to breathe the whole body. Again, James chapter 3, verse 2. Let's go. For in many things we offend all. If any man offends not in word, the same is a perfect man, and also to bridle the whole body. Amen. If you go and read the book of um, James, uh, especially in that area, it talks about a, a, a part of a big ship called the ruder. Praise the Lord. Very small member of the ship. But that, that part of that ship, part of the ship, it kind of dictates the direction the ship will go. If they turn the ruder left, the ship will go left. If you turn the ruder right, the ship will go right. But yet, it's a very small member of the ship. So, like the book of James puts it, our mouth is a kind of very small member of our body, amen? But yet, it can determine whether we live or we die. Whether we end in yeah, spend life, uh, eternal life with God in heaven or eternity in hell. So it's a part, a member of our body that is worth paying very, very close attention to. So, the lesson introduction, uh, before we do that, let's go to Proverbs 10, 19 to 21. Let's see what our lesson text also has to say concerning our mouth. Remember, the lesson is silence can be golden. And for us to be silent, we have to master how, or be able to control how we use our mouth. Praise the Lord. If you are there before me, please quickly read for us. Amen. The, for the earlier part of it says, in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. 
So it's basically saying that if you are one that likes to talk a lot, if you are one that likes to just open your mouth at every opportune time, if you are one that just is just quick to open your mouth, there will be numerous times that you end up saying things that are not factual. And any time we open our mouth to say things that are not factual, it's a lie. Praise the Lord. Whether it's intentional or whether it's not intentional, lie is a lie. So we have to learn to what? Hello? Pridu our tongue. Because another thing I want to quickly point out there is that one of the things that the Bible says we are going to give account of is every word that comes out of our mouth. Bible is very clear of it. Apart from the works of our hands and apart from all that, every single syllable of word that comes out of our mouth, Bible says we are what? Going to give account of it. Pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's say an introduction. Words are powerful and can make or man. Words can save or put one in trouble. It takes forth maturity and self-discipline to be a person of few words spoken in wisdom. Therefore, being in a rush to speak is always a sign of weakness and foolishness. Proverbs 6 2. Can somebody read that for us? Amen. Thou art sneered with the words of thy mouth. You see, when I read King James Version, I don't just assume I know the meaning of the words, especially the word snare. And if you have for people that are not reading King James Version, the word snare means what? Trap. Thou art trapped with the words of... So that's why we have to be careful. Amen. So, the moment you alter it, you can't take it back. This is that the, the Yorubas have um, this proverb that's saying, any laurel, that the, the, the words that comes out of your mouth is like egg. The moment it drops, it's, you can't, it's, it's shattered. You can't put the egg back together again. So, the only time we have control over it is before we speak it, before we let it out. So, it's very clear that, that that speaks for itself. And anyone does not have control over his mouth, the Bible likes in him to a foolish person, a fool. That's why it says that, therefore, being in a rush to speak is always a sign of weakness and foolishness. So many scriptures liking one that does not have control over his mouth as one that behaves like a fool. Pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Lesson introduction, I mean lesson outline. The fool's mouth, that's a part A of it and the part B says slow to speak and its benefit. We're going to move a little bit faster now. A fool, I'm taking the part A. A fool is a person who acts unwisely or imprudently. However, one of the downfall of a fool is his mouth, which is very quick to expression Oh, sorry, which is very quick to expressions, according to Proverbs 18.7. So let's see Proverbs 18.7 quickly. Proverbs 18.7. Amen. Let's go. Thank you. A full smart is what? A fool's mouth is what? And the B part. God help us. Amen. So it speaks for itself. According, sorry, according to Proverbs 18.7, a fool's mouth is, is destruction and his rash word are a trap to his soul. This is because no bridle is 
employed to keep the mouth shut and to speak only when necessary. I take that again. This is because no bridru, no bridru is employed to keep the mouth shut and to speak only when necessary. If we don't have a zipper over our mouth, praise the Lord. That control is you. That control is me. That control has to be deliberate. Praise the Lord. You should be the one to choose when you want to open your mouth. I should be the one to choose when I want to open my mouth. What are, okay, I don't want to digress, but I was, I, I was saying to my kids this morning, because I've also, if you have been gripped by fear, praise the Lord, you are in front of an authority figure, maybe your parents, your teacher, and you have been gripped by fear, and they, are, asked, they have accused you, they, 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 they're asking you a question, and you know the first thing that you want to that wants to come out of your mouth is a lie. I said, you are better off not saying anything. Hello? Because one thing we established yesterday is that, I mean, the last time is that fear is one of those things that make us lie. Anytime our emotion has been compromised, any action we take after emotional compromise is always a wrong one. It's most of the time a wrong one. So one of the best times to practice this teaching, silence can be golden, is when you know that you're already emotionally compromised. You're better off. We are better off not saying anything. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. A fool's mouth is used to engage in ceaseless and unprofitable argument. Proverbs 18, 6 established that, which may end up in, um, which may end up, okay, so which may end up in a fight. The mouth of a fool runs without control, thus bringing about restlessness. So many scriptures address that. Proverbs 17, 28. A fool is not trusted because of irregularity in speech. That's another area that we need to watch out for. And that's another thing that, that can really jump out at you when you want to know this kind of people. You see, they can tell you the same thing. Five, ten different versions of the same event. That's how you know that this person is not using it. Like, and now the, the, what do you call them? The law enforcement agencies, they kind of use this tool a lot. They call you and they ask you to come and give an account of what happened. You, 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 in the process of narrating what happened, you told them A. The next time they call you to come and give account of what happened again, you told them B. And you keep adding to it, you keep taking away from it, they will not take you serious. They say, is it that you are lying? Or you don't know, or you are not even there when it happens. So, and these things are a dead giveaway. So the point we are trying to make here is that, you know, in the use of our mouth, we have to be very, very deliberate. We have to, like, not just, which is the point there, irregular, irregularity in speech. And when you, when you, your, your, your speech, your can be consistent. It's, it's, a, it's a telltale sign of the fact that you have either you have lied or you are lying or you have added to it or you have taken away from it and your testimony will not be taken serious. And that will be a wrong use of the mouth. Praise the Lord. Because he believes he is always rich and hates accountability. So Let's see Proverbs 29, 11. You see where we are going with that. Proverbs 29, 11. Oh, my. Amen. Quickly. Again, ma. A fool does what? Amen. That's another advice for us on how to use our mouth. A fool does what? 
Mommy, again. <laughs> he just he blah, 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 Especially when somebody is angry, you know, you just go all out. You did, you just with that emotion, you just say everything, and then before you know it, the one you are not even supposed to say, you have said it, and even though you are the one that should have won the the case, but because you have used anger and just brought that, you have destroyed the whole thing. But if we can learn to control ourselves and hold back and not say anything. And control our emotion, if possible, but most importantly, not open our mouth. It's it's it helps a lot. It helps a lot. I, I was using one example. Okay, I, I just don't want to run out of time, but this example is very important. Okay, let's say you are in front of your boss. Your boss, yes, he was wrong, but because he he he, he wants to use his veto power, it's the fact that he was your boss. And then he's trying to, you know, turn the whole situation around and trying to make you as a guilty one. You have two options. It's either you keep quiet and let him have his way, or you stand to his face and point to him, Oga, you are wrong. On this matter, you are wrong. You might think you are in your right to do that. It's okay. I want you to have any good jello. Praise the Lord. But don't forget that this man is your boss. There will be a time when you will be truly wrong. But he would want to get back at you because of the way you behaved the last time. And because he's your boss, he can really, really get back at you. Praise God. Where, where, where am I going with that? Is that sometimes you can be right and then still be silent. Praise the Lord. And not try to, you know, go all out to defend yourself and um, make the matter worse. If you see the situation I just painted, it's not like you couldn't you couldn't have put your boss in his place by defending yourself, but you are still there and he's still your boss. And remember, there will be a time you will be wrong, and he can use that against you. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. A fool argues and expresses frustration openly and thus cannot cease from strife. Yes, he argues. He wants to say, I am right. And he goes all out. He expresses his frustration. But the argument goes on and on and on, and at the end of the day, he accomplishes nothing. Especially if you are the other person is like you. There are times we must learn to just say, you know what, it's okay. And you you keep quiet and let it be. See, there's no amount of argument you can argue with that other person. If the other person's understanding, understanding has not gotten to that level. You, it's not going to make any difference. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Part B, slow to speak and its benefit. So, we have been saying a lot of things about us learning to be silent. So, what are the benefits that would, that would come to us if we can suck it up? And be silent, even sometimes in the face of situations when we are right. Being slow to speak is never a sign of weakness. Apostle James, in the book of James 119, admonish everyone to be slow to speak. To be slow to speak, we must learn to do the following. Think before talking. The Bible says, be quick to hear, but be what? Be slow to speak. Be slow to talk. Be slow to open your mouth. Amen. Choose and use your words wisely. The reason you are being slow to speak is that you are processing 
what you have heard. You are picking and choosing how you will respond. If you are just quick to, to open your mouth and did not give enough time to process what you have heard, there is a tendency, there is a likelihood that you would respond wrongly and you will misunderstand what you have heard. Praise the Lord. Let, the words, let our words be what? Gracious. Amen? Bible says a cold answer turns away wrath. Amen? Let our words be what? Gracious. You don't respond with the magnitude of what you have heard sometimes. Like the person has really, but you know, be gracious, be merciful. Tender justice with mercy. Praise the Lord. Avoid being rash with words and decisions. Avoid being rash with words and decisions. So, let's be kind with our word. Let's temper justice with mercy when we are using our words. Because one thing words does is that if sometimes we respond back with the magnitude of what we have heard and understood, there's a tendency to rouse emotion. And then the person becomes irritated, angry, angered, and all that. Amen? And then he, there's a tendency for the back and forth. The person is angry, and then he will say another one, he will get you angry, and then the thing goes on and on and on and on and on like that. So, the use of words are very important. Speak with wisdom. Very important. Wisdom. Wisdom. Profitable to direct. Talk less and listen actively and attentively to others. Again, talk less and do what? Listen actively and attentively to others. And this is one area that, okay, let, let, me, let me say this. You, if you find yourself in a situation whereby somebody is telling you something, amen, and the person has not landed, and you already assume in your mind that you understand what the person is saying or is about to say. And you just give it to them. Pow! And you are just ready to fire back. And then the person says, relax. You didn't understand me. This is what I'm trying to say. And you then realize that you have misunderstood that person. But already you have opened your mouth in a ace. And... So, is, we need to be very careful with the use of our, of our mouth. I'm trying as my best to be as general as possible. But from all this, we should be able to see ourselves where we are falling short and where we need to work, work on. It doesn't matter who you are. It could be between you and your wife. It could be between you and your boss. It could be between you and your children. Anywhere. We all use our mouth one way or the other. And we should be learning to practice everything we are hearing this morning. Amen. And uh, I'm going to say, it says, ask the Lord to set a guard at your mouth. Ask who? The Lord to set a guard at your mouth. Let's see Psalm 141 verse 3 and James 3 2. This is an area we are Sometimes, most times, we need God's help. 141 verse 3, Psalm 141 verse 3, and James 3, 2, which is our memory verse. That one is our memory verse, but... Amen. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Because there will be times when you feel so much like responding. You feel so much like getting back at people with the words of your mouth. It's not like you don't know what to say. You don't, it's not like you don't know how to say it. It's not like you don't know the, the places where you hit and that person will be put in his or her place. But will he solve the problem? Will he 
It will only make us feel better temporarily. Because I, but we need to really solve the problem. Pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. But again, if we need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, pray the psalmist's prayer. Set a guard, set a watch on my, life, on my lips. That Lord, help me. Help me to be able to use the words of my mouth better. Help me to be able to practice this teaching of this morning. To be able to stay quiet, not to open my mouth when I know that I'm emotionally compromised. When I know that the word I'm going to speak is not factual, it's not going to be true, or it's, going to, it's not going to be kind, it's not going to be nice. Lord, help me to learn to keep quiet. Being slow to speak has a lot of benefit. For instance, it shows we are knowledgeable. Also, it depicts understanding. There's so many scriptural verses to back up this teaching of this morning. I want us to please take our time to read all these passages, Proverbs 17, 27, 15, 2, and even Proverbs 10, 13, 17, and then 28, B. And the right use, it, says, it depicts understanding and the right use of words. If we bridle our tongues, we will command attention and respect. Because, you know, they know that anytime you are opening your mouth, people want to listen to you because they know anytime you are opening your mouth, you have something worthwhile that makes sense to say. So, they know you just don't open your mouth for the sake of it. Pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. You command respect when you learn, when we master the act of using our mouth the right way. Our world will be sound and seasoned because you have taken your time to really process it and think about it before you, you, you speak it out. We will avoid needless argument, troubles, battles, and keep safe. <laughs> Pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Myself and my wife, we were watching a show yesterday. The mother-in-law was in the dining table. The husband and, their, uh, and the mother-in-law, the husband and the wife. And the mother-in-law was eating and the plate was making noise and there was a lot of mushy going on. And the, the wife looked at her mother-in-law and said, ah, Mama, why are you eating and you're, you're eating as if your mouth and you're eating as if you are a goat? Hello. I <laughs> Thank God it was a film. I was, it was a movie. But can you see the use of mouth? And the, and the mother-in-law just got up from the dining table and she went to the room and she was crying. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that, you see, the use of mouth, <laughs> you can kill with the mouth without using a knife. And you can save with the mouth without using a knife. But you, you just fill in the gap and imagine the rest of the story. There's a lot of problem we can bring into our own life through our mouth. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In conclusion, we can create unneeded tension if we are rash with our mouths. Relationship grow. By listening actively and speaking slowly. Pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, you know, I would um, leave the, the floor is open now. We have like 10 minutes to, you know, talk and I'll allow uh, mommy, mommy, and Falabi to take it from here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Silence can be silence can be and if we keep our mouths, what are we keeping? We are keeping our lives. Praise the Lord. Do we have any question? We have two. From the back, sir. The 
Praise the Lord. Please be concerned because of our time. Hallelujah. Is there questions or contribution? All right, sir. Please uh, try to wrap it up because of our time, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Praise. It's sensible, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Silence can be golden. So we should watch what we say. Even when we try to study our environment, even when we try to, we want to participate uh, concerning the things that are around us, but yet as Christians, we have, we have guidelines. That's the way I would put it. We have guidelines. There are some things that as Christians we should say or we should talk about. There are some things that we are not supposed to talk about. And when we want to talk about things, we should know what our contributions should be. Our words, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 4 verse 6, should be such that is seasoned with salt, such that will bring grace to the hearers. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. That is a question or contribution? contribution. All right, sir. Way that thank you, man. That during the uh, time of uh, of writing the Bible, we do not have internet. Now that we have internet, that almost it's almost the same thing. That we have to be careful what we put on the internet. I give you an example of the the, the tomato paste. Uh, the lady with the tomato paste in Nigeria that says something about a review, and she is in the trouble. The man is in trouble. Everybody is in trouble. Uh, even with the internet now, what we are typing, what we are using our finger to do, is almost the same thing as uh, what we are saying. So we have to be careful. And this is, I'm speaking to myself because some of us that are very strong about the situation in Nigeria, we tend to go one way or the other. We tend to be very abusive on the internet. So we have to caution ourselves. Praise the Lord. I remember our dear sister Ogbolu said something about that last week. Praise the Lord. That when we try to pass some information online, that we should verify the information before we pass it across to others. When we were discussing about a line tongue, that otherwise, those who are passing the wrong information that has been pushed out by someone, they are the same because you have not verified it. So we should be very careful about the information that we pass across to others. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we pray, there are, oh, we have one more. Yes, ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, I was just going to touch base on what uh, Diki Oyaniji said. When he said, um, if your boss 
is accusing you, don't say anything, don't even speak about it. I don't think that is true. Because there are times people take your silence as witness. I will address it. I might not say anything at that moment, but I will come back to it when my mind settles down. Because if I speak at that time that you are accusing me of what I don't know anything about, if I say anything, I might say the wrong thing. So what I would do is that day I will not say anything, but I'm coming back to address that issue. Thank Praise you, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for about that, ma. Praise the Lord. I think that is the first thing. That is the first thing on what I already have to say. Is it still on the same thing, ma? About the issue of the boss? Okay. Uh, I want to ask that. Quickly, ma. I want to ask the question. Okay. If, if the, uh, someone knows that he has a big mouth and you try. Someone to, knows that. He, he talks to. Uh, okay. So, in order to avoid argument or fight, and the person always keep quiet all the time, and people want to take advantage of it, will that still continue? Because the day you bust out, that is the only day they will see. But all the days you'll be keeping quiet and then eating your heart with their word, they never see that. So, in that kind of situation, will you keep, continue to keep quiet or you just. I don't know. I don't know how to solve that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Does anyone have an answer? All right, ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, as human beings, you know, we have relationships. Communication is key. We have to set boundaries. We must learn to set boundaries. You can't continue to take insults without without responding at a time. But the point is that, what's the manner of response? That is it. If you are guided by the Bible, you will know how to respond. The Bible says, a gentle word does what? Turns, Turns away, away wrath. wrath. So there must, there must be a way you would address it, just like our mommy has said. Thank there you, must Ma. be a way. You don't have to keep quiet endlessly. No, that is not Christian. But address it the way you should, as, as guided by the Bible. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Ma. Our time is up. Praise the Lord. And I still have some things to, to tell us. All right, Ma. Praise the Lord. 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds is gone. I was just going to say, the thing with the boss, or having issue with people in the office, is that you can always prevent having an ad boss on the floor by asking for a conference. Right, you can always say, Can we go to the conference room? I need to see you in the conference, or demand or request to have a conference with that person who you are having issue with in an office. You don't have to be to do it on the floor. When it's on the floor, that's when it is not acceptable. Because you can even get fired sometimes for fighting at work or for quarreling. But when you request for your boss to see them in the office and you talk the matter out, you're able to speak your mind and tell them how you feel about whatever is going on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Ma. Yes, we have heard it. There are ways and there are ways that we air our mind. We cannot continue to keep quiet when we are supposed to talk. And we should not talk when we are supposed to keep quiet. When there are issues, as we have heard, I won't repeat all that, that it is better, the Bible even supports it, that if you have something against your brother, settle it between you between you, two of you. Between the two of you. So there is a room for you to call your brother, who is your boss now, to let him know, this is the way I see this, this is the way I see this. In a respectful manner. Not being rude. And ordinarily, he is human. He also will listen. And as Christians, we are supposed to pray about any step we take. So when we go, as we don't go alone, we are going in the name of the Lord and we are speaking to him. What we know is that the Lord will take charge of that conversation and it will not work against us. Praise the Lord. That's about that. But before we pray, I want to quickly say some things. That there was a time we treated this kind of a lesson back home where I came from. And I noticed some things. So when I saw this lesson again, my mind went to those things. It says, don't open your mouth. 
in the heat of anger. They all have Bible passages. Don't open your mouth when you don't have all the facts. So I want us to pay attention. If there is anyone that is relevant to us, please let us speak it and walk over it. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Do not open your mouth when you have not verified the story. Do not open your mouth if your words will offend a weaker brother or sister. Do not open your mouth if your words will be a poor reflection of yourself, of the Lord, and of your family. When you are tempted to joke about sin, do not open your mouth. When you would be ashamed of your words later, please do not open your mouth. If your words will convey a wrong impression, please keep your mouth shut. If the issue is none of your business, silence is golden. When you are tempted to tell a lie, please do not open your mouth. If your words will damage another person's reputation, please do not open your mouth. If your words will destroy a friendship, do not open your mouth. When you are feeling critical, do not open your mouth. If you can't speak without yelling, please, silence is golden. If you can't speak without yelling, silence is golden. When it is time to listen, we have heard it this morning, do not open your mouth to talk. If you may have to eat your words later, silence will be golden. If you have already said that thing more than once, please don't say it again. It will become nagging. When you are tempted to flatter a wicked person, do not open your mouth. And when you are supposed to be walking instead, do not open your mouth. The Bible says, an idle hand is a what? The devil's tool. Let us rise up and pray. Let's tell God. Let's look at all those ones. In what area am I affected? In what area are you touched? Let's tell God this morning. Silence is golden. God help me. I have heard it. Give me the grace to always examine my words before I speak out. Help me, O oh God, so that the words of my mouth will not damage the reputation of others. Help me, O oh God, that the words that will come out of my mouth will be such that will give grace to the hearers in the name of Jesus. Are we already praying? Heavenly Father, help me. Help me. Help me, O oh God. I have heard it this morning that silence can be golden. Help me, O oh God, that the words of my mouth will be such that will give grace to those who hear it. Help me, O oh God, that with the word of my mouth, I will not destroy the life of others. The Bible says, whosoever openeth his mouth and his tongue destroys his life. Help me, O oh God, so that I will not dig my grave with my own mouth. Help me, O oh God. Let's help and pray for our brothers and sisters, those who are not opportune to be here this morning. Or if there is anyone that you know that this is this person's weakness, oh Lord, I lift up my brother and my sister to you this morning. Help us all, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Set a watch on my lips, oh God, and keep the door of my mouth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so, Father, as we continue this morning, we pray that your presence will continue with us. And at the end of everything, you take the glory for yourself. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord this morning and we give him all the glory. We thank God for dying for us, for coming in the form of man and dying for us, resurrecting and giving us victory. Can someone shout a wonderful hallelujah? Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Can someone shout a wonderful hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Can you begin to bless the name of the Lord? Say, Father, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to see another Easter. Thank you for this change that has come to my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my family. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Thank you. Can someone worship God from the depth of your heart? Bless the name of the Lord. Give him worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Emmanuel. We bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 This morning we are starting with a song that says, Hosanna Bukole, which says, God my strength. Hosanna Nimambo, who says, God with me. Can someone repeat after me? Hosanna Bukole. Hosanna Bukole. It says, God my strength. Hosanna. Yes. Hosanna Nimambo says, God with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you still be in the mood and that that's the worship? Oh Hosanna Bukole Alleluia Hosanna Hosanna Bukole Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Bukole, Hallelujah, Hosanna, Hosanna, Bukole, Hallelujah, Hosanna, oh, oh, Hosanna. Oh, 
time singing. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy Easter to everyone here in the auditorium and everyone watching online. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ continue to work for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We really want to appreciate Almighty God for another Easter, a time like this. That's the reason why we are Christians. And we want to thank God because we are seeing another Easter in the life of the living, hale and hearty. And together we want to praise his holy name once again. And we pray, almighty God, that our praise and worship will be acceptable in his sight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We know that today is the <clears throat> last day of the month, month of March, the last day. And we normally, you know, started our revival yesterday, two days to the end of the month. And the following first day of the, of the other month. So today we are having a church service now. And then we're having another uh, program at 11 p.m., you know, to cross us over into the new month. So please, let's endeavor to, to log on at 11 p.m. I think that we're going to have a um, fellowship, house fellowship. Please, house fellowship at 6.30 as usual, the last, day of the, last Sunday of the month. And then that, let's not forget the 11 p.m. service. Almighty God will continually renew our strength as we walk for him tirelessly in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And tomorrow, which is the first day of the month, our revival continues. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Before then, we have our prayers at 5 a.m. Let's endeavor to log on. And then at 7 p.m. too, the last day of our revival. And um, at 10 p.m., we usually have the North America prayer. So let's 
you know, not be tired of logging on. Tuesday, our Bible study continues. A lot of us have not been coming. Please, let's try and remove all obstacles. Let's try. God, when there's a will, there will always be a way. And God will always make a way for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the prayers continue. We have prayer at midnight too. Let's not forget that. Midnight on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and on Thursday. And on Thursday, 7 p.m., we have a um, faith clinic. And this coming Friday is going to be the first Friday of the month. So we have a Holy Ghost night and a Holy Communion. It's going to be here in the church auditorium, 10 p.m. So please, let's remember all these um, activities. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And of course, next week's Sunday is going to be our Thanksgiving Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. Let's come and glorify the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If there's any other announcements... Uh, Pastor, we bring it across to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. It's testimony time. If you know the almighty God has done so wonderful in your life and you want to share it to every one of us, can you please come out and testify to his goodness? That is if you have seen the pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. He has done for me, 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 what my person cannot do, he has done for me, cannot do, he has done for me, oh, hallelujah, he has done for me. Everybody, thank you. God bless you all. Um, God has already the testimony today. Uh, God has asked me to put some things. The past has passed. Um, and be focused and step forward. So, but I have to still give the testimony of the past. How merciful he is. How greater he is. On the uh, Palm Sunday, we were all in the church. God is real. Our pastor was deeply moving forward, telling everybody how Christ was entering Jerusalem in the morning, and the prayer was that every affliction, everything that is not well in your life, it will go as Christ is entering this, this season. On that chair, many things happened to me. I went into trance. And I saw, I saw victory. I saw victory. Before the victory, I saw turbulence. And later, I saw victory. Immediately we finished the service, the workers were here. I couldn't hide it. It was, it was too much for me to hold. I quickly called the man of God and told him everything. I told him everything. I was in the trance there. I quickly had my brother Marcos. Is my witness. So we were celebrating victory over a destructive, a turbulent thing that would have happened. I saw it. So we went home. I've not even told my wife. So we went home. On getting to the house, uh, I didn't come out of, uh, down from the car. My little boy celebrated his birthday during the week. We didn't have time for him. But he was asking us to take him out. But it was so chilly that Palm Sunday. I look at mom's face and say, look, you know how we handle this boy? Let me take him to wherever he wants to buy stuff. Look, you must bring it home. I'm not going to sit down with you. He said, yes. So I took Omo and himself alone. We drove out. While we were on uh, Pelham Parkway, just the beginning, heading towards the white plane cross, crossway by the train station. Oh, my God. We never expected what happened. My, the front of my car was torn to pieces. Jesus Christ. Boom! Heavy boom! A car came from nowhere. We were both heading towards 
Parliament Parkway. It was on the right. It made an attempt to just cross the middle lane and swerve to the right. And the next thing, I was shivering. It has happened. Came outside. Uh, I was divided between managing these people, Gideon and him by herself. She was bleeding from with her no teeth. You know, she was right at the back. She was nagging, nagging. So I just have to, what do I do? But I don't want the guy to go. This guy is also, you know, is destroyed, you know, at the driver's side. So what do I do? I was just, I went to him. We were talking. Mom was crying. The Gideon was crying. So to call the marriage shot, ambulance came. Uh, I called the cops. The cops said they don't. They no longer go to accident scene in New York. You just uh, I said, you have to come. A child is bleeding and she's special needs. So I forced it. I said, look, I'm not going to leave. One guy came around and said, just move your car. You are crossing the road. I said, no, the cops must come. So they came around eventually. It was a long stretch. And you know what? Immediately, I just saw Mommy Bolaniwa. Ah. You know, I saw her. I was. She said, Daddy, what happened? What happened? She was there with me, drought in the cold. I pity her. Even though you jacket, the little girl, Faith, she's cold. She was there with me, drought. I appreciate you, ma. God bless you, ma. If I call pastor. Are you still in the church? You're not just like an hour plus. So, pastor came down to the scene. We were all at the scene. What am I talking about? Even if hand is broken, even leave accident. Forget, forget it. So go, go, move forward. Just move forward. They process all the papers, police report, and everything. But I just want, I, I've learned to put it out of my mind because there is a blessing coming for everybody. So when that blessing is coming, something will come up to abstract it. We will not fall victim of blessing hijackers. This is the spirit of blessing hijackers. So God Almighty is using it to transform my life. I appreciate him for this. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the living Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I will come. <laughs> Why are you? More you may come to. Hallelujah! 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 My hand. Praise the Lord. Well, I thank God for your life, sir. It could have been worse, but you are here to testify to His goodness. And I pray, Almighty Jehovah, that that testimony that you have given will be permanent in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be no accident in your way again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Master Jesus, our Lord is good. I'm here to testify of the goodness of God upon my life. I'm here to give him back all the glory that he deserves. I'm here to say thank you, Jesus. Ways are not enough for me to say thank you. Baba, I'm thanking you for all that you have done. In my life, in the life of my family, in the life of my extended family, in the life of the church of God, Father, you have been so faithful to us. Father, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your protection, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for your provision. Father, I thank you for Johnny Mercy's. Every day I drive to work. When I almost get to my street, I say thank you, Lord, for Johnny Mercy. Because I know it is not by our power, it is not by our mind. We hear so many things happening. We hear testimony upon testimony of accident upon accident. Sometimes you're on the way driving, a car will just drive towards your direction. It is by the mercy of God that we are not consumed. 
God has always been there for me. I just want to thank this God because God has been so awesome in my life. Father, you alone know what I'm saying. Father, I say thank you. Father, I say thank you. Father, I say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You know I appreciate you. Every day of my life, I appreciate you, God. And I will continue to appreciate you. I will continue to love you. The grace for me to know you, you will bestow upon my life. Father, may your name alone be glorified. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for adding another year to my life yesterday. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I thank you, I give you praises. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, I thank you for the life of my mother. May her soul continue to rest in peace. Because next day she was not there to call me. To pray for me and to say Esther, happy birthday. But I know it is well. Because I know you are my strength. And you will continue to be with me. In Jesus' name I have thank you. All the glory must be to the Lord. To the Lord. For he is worthy of the glory and honor be unto our maker, our God, for all that he has been doing for us. I want to thank God on behalf of my loving husband, my boyfriend. I want to thank God for all that he has been doing. The lover of my life. After Jesus Christ is the only one that remains. I don't have mother, I don't have father. He's the only one that remains. So I want to bless the name of the Lord for sparing his life. The Lord added uh, he was a year older yesterday. And um, jokingly, I always say that when we be rushing, I, I used to think you are still a baby. You are, no more, you are, you are an elderly person. So, so I just want to bless God for his, the strength. The strength of the Lord is his strength. And it will continue to be his strength in the name of Jesus. The power of the Lord will continue to uphold him in the name of Jesus. Amen. He has laid his son upon the plow. He will never look back in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want to bless the name of the Lord for all the battle that he has been fighting on his behalf. The sin and on his sin battle. I want to thank God for all that he has been doing. And I want to thank God that God of heaven, this new year will be more glorious than all the years that he has spent in the name of Jesus. Physical strength, spiritual Spiritual strength, the Lord we add unto him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have asked. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, in addition to what my wife said, I also want to thank every one of you. <laughs> every one of you, the Church of God, your text messages, your yeah. calling, your gift. I pray that Almighty God. He will reward you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. We are very grateful. God bless you. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies will you see. Thank God for my daughter, 
The Lord added another year to her year on Friday. I bless the name of the Lord because she has been a special daughter to me, special child. She took everything after me. So I bless oh. God for that. <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank God for the life of my mom. She was there with us for years. I want to bless God because I've never had a day to rush her to the hospital. Oh. She doesn't go. She only goes for a uh, medical checkup every year. And she sometimes, you know, I will think and I also, I will be thanking God that, God, thank you. Because this woman never gave me any problem, mm. any sickness. I bless the name of the Lord for her life. Also, I want to thank the old church. The old church, thank you for taking, for accepting her for who she is. Mm. I thank you all for always standing up and shouting hallelujah with her. <laughs> because hallelujah, and I'm saying a very big thank you. Even the grandmas. Everybody was just giving her gifts. Can you imagine? Giving her money, giving her this, praying with her. Even when she got home, people called her. I want to thank God for the gift, for everything, for the support. Since she has been here, thank you, everyone. Pastor, thank you, sir, for always allowing her to come out and say hallelujah. Amen. I hope people will not miss her hallelujah anyway. Thank you so much. So for this church, please help me shout seven hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I thanking God for yet another year, another um, um, resurrection day that we are able to witness? Yes, yeah, she's giving glory to God. And the song that she has sang says that power of resurrection come and do wonders in my life today, today. And I pray that God will do so in Jesus' name. And as well, she's thanking God that one of our children tomorrow will be uh, his or her birthday. So she's giving the glory to God for all that God has done. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are going to, the prayer is going to be two parts. So we are going to pray for everyone that has just testified, and then we'll pray for pastors separate. So um, if you have given your testimony, can you please stand up, and every one of us will pray for you. Stand up, please. Church, can you please stretch forth your hands and pray for these ones? Father in heaven, King of glory, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for your children. We thank you for their testimonies. We thank you, Almighty Jehovah, King of glory, that we did not hear any evil news concerning any of these, you know, your children, and none of us throughout the whole week. Almighty Jehovah, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, we give you all the adorations. We thank you, Almighty Jehovah, 
for your daughter who has gone home and she is home safely. We thank you for that. We thank you, Almighty Jehovah, for those that are celebrating their birthdays. And we pray, Almighty Jehovah, King of Glory, that are many, many more birthdays they will celebrate in this land of the living in the mighty name of Jesus. That things of celebration will never cease from their home in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, King of Glory, we say thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So we are also going to pray for our pastor. Because... Um, for every one of us here, we are testimony to how good our pastor is to us. When, um, if after God, when we are in trouble, we call on pastor. Anything we want to do, we call on pastor. I think today is a good day for us to recognize him and for us to pray for him. Yesterday was his birthday. So who will pastor go to? God. But besides God, who else? So it's us. So we are going to ask Pastor to please come and let the church pray for you. And also every um, uh, man of God, pastors in the house, we are also going to pray for Pastor after the whole church has prayed. So please, church, stretch forth your hand and pray for Pastor. And I, uh, Daddy, if there be Mrs. Mommy Debbie, please, after that, I want all the pastors in the house to please come out and pray for our pastor also. So let's press for our hand. Almighty God, King of Glory, we say thank you, Lord. Ancient of days, we say thank you. We thank you for your son. We thank you for how well you have used him. We thank you for where you have brought him from. We thank you for where you are taking him. We thank you for where he is. We thank you, Almighty Jehovah, for sustaining him and his family. And we thank you for adding another year to his years. Almighty Jehovah, King of glory, we pray, Almighty God, that this year will be better and greater than all other years in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Almighty God, King of glory, that you will continue to sustain him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, King of glory, ancient of days, that every new can honor you. For Father, King of glory, that everything will start falling in places, pleasant places for him in the mighty name of Jesus. Almighty Jehovah, King of glory, so shall he be in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, he will live to see 70, 80, 90, 100 in the mighty name of Jesus. Almighty God, as you are blessing him, you bless his family in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, King of glory. It shall be well with him. It shall be well with his home. It shall be well with his family. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall he be. In the name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, we say thank you. Ancient of this, we say thank you, Lord. Almighty God, King of glory, we glorify your name for his life. In the name of Jesus. To you be all the glory, Lord. To you be all the honor. To you be all the adorations. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, all the pastors in the house, can we? Can you all please come out and pray for him separately? Pastors in the house, praise the Lord. Father, I mean, please pray for him as God has led you. Jesus mighty name we pray in the name of Jesus we pray father we want to thank you we thank you for your son we thank you for what you have been doing in his life in his family lord we appreciate you 
Lord, as a church, we say thank you for the shepherd you have given unto us that has been feeding us, that has been showing us the way of life. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, today we are appreciating you for his life. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your power. Lord, we say receive all the praise. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as a church, we ask, oh God, that your blessing will rest upon your son. Lord, we ask, oh God, that today will mark the beginning of great and mighty things that you will do through him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, for strength. We ask that your power and your grace will rest upon his life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for wisdom. Lord, to take this joy to the next level. The power, the anointing. Lord, let it be released upon your son. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, by this time next year, when your son will be celebrating another by day, he will have many more testimonies. Over his children, Lord, he will have cause to rejoice. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the deep desires of his heart grant unto him. In the mighty name of Jesus. That which he is trusting you for. Lord, let it be released unto him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Receive all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us rise up. I want us to give thanks to Almighty God this morning. I don't know if you are tired of doing that. If we remember or call to remembrance what we are celebrating today, I believe that you and I will see more reasons why we should glorify his name. John chapter 15 verse 13 says, There is no greater love than this. For a man to lay down his life for the sake of his friends. No father will say, okay, this son that has done something bad. This one who is seen as a victim. Leave him alone. Let me die for him. Even if anybody will want to do anything that is good for someone. You will want to, good for somebody, want to do for someone who is good. Not for the one who is bad. But the book of Romans made us to know that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So for this reason, I want us to lift up our voices this morning and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. If you know the worth of what he has done for you, open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you. Lord, I glorify your name. When I am nothing, nothing, when I did not even worth it at all, you chose, you came, you surrendered your life. You were crucified on the cross for my sake. The Bible says, what is man? What is man that you are mindful of him? Father, we return all the glory to you this morning. Thank you for all that you have done for us, O oh God. We are not taking it for granted. We appreciate you. Father, we say thank you. Your word says you thought it of no robbery to be equal with God. But Lord... You took the form of a servant. You humbled yourself. You came to this sinful world. You laid down your life for your sakes. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, oh God. Lord, we appreciate you. Father, we say thank you. For the work on the cross, Father, we say thank you. Your word in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Cause be he that was hung upon the cross, that the blessings of Abraham may be ours. Father, we say thank you this day. We glorify you, O God. As individuals, as families, and as a church, as a body of Christ, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Father, we are grateful. Lord, we return all the glory to you. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we have given thanks. Amen. Some three days ago, we all knew what happened. He was arrested and was crucified for offenses he never committed. Yes, we call it Good Friday. But if we look at it in the real sense of it, I said it on Friday when I had the opportunity. It was a bad Friday. How will a mother behold his son being mishandled even to the point of death? And we still call it good. But the Lord turned it good for you and I. So I want us to lift up our voices once again and say, Father, thank you. Thank you. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. You and I, we are partakers. We are beneficiaries of what Christ did on the cross. Father, we say thank you. Mary cried because of Jesus, so that our mothers will not cry because of us. So that we as parents will not cry over our children. Father, we say thank you for all that you stand for in our lives. We appreciate you, O oh God. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. One more time, I want us to thank God. Because of what this day stands for. So many benefits. Especially for taking you and I out of the world. For bringing us into himself. I want us to lift up our voices and say, Father, I thank you. Because I see so many who are outside, they are wallowing in sin. It is not that they have not heard the gospel, but the Lord who helped us, that when we heard it, it had meaning in us. It was because God made it so. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. He shed his blood on the cross. And the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Now I want us to look at ourselves. Is there anyone among us who can boldly beat his or her chest and say, I have not committed sin? Even today, 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 we commit sins right inside church. Not to talk of when we are in our homes, we are in our offices, we are in our marketplaces or wherever. So I want us to tell God that the work of atonement that was completed on the cross will not be in vain over us. Let's tell God, God, forgive me my sins. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Let the blood that you shed on the cross be sufficient for my cleansing. Let your blood be sufficient to wash away my sins. In the name of Jesus, have mercy on us, O oh God. That the work of the cross will be complete over us. That that which you have come to do for us will not go in vain over our lives. Have mercy on us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Wash us clean, O oh God. As individuals, as families, and as a church, we ask for your mercy, O oh God. We ask for pardon. Father, pardon us. Forgive us, O oh God. Draw us closer to yourself, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to quickly read from Matthew chapter 28. The first six verses says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Praise the Lord. I want us to pray. That, you know, the enemy, they, they thought they have finished the job. Not just putting him in the grave, the roll stones on the tomb, not that alone. They put soldiers in charge that peradventure anybody will want to come near. I don't want to go into all that, but we believe that is the reason why some people are saying he did not resurrect. They came and they stole him. That in case they may want to come and steal his body, soldiers, see to those people. But what did the Bible say? The Bible said they became like dead men. Let us tell God that those who are thinking or the problems that are thinking it is all over for us, that the Lord will render them impotent in the name of Jesus. I want us to lift up our voices this morning and say, Lord, 
any problem, anything in my life at all, anything in my family, anything in my church that is thinking it is all over for us, that is thinking it is all over for me. Lord, render them important in the name of Jesus. Read them of their power in the name of Jesus. Relegate them, O oh God. Put them to shame in the name of Jesus. Render them as dead in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I don't know what is dead in your life. When Jesus died on the cross, he was buried. Even to the disciples, some of them didn't believe that like he said earlier, that on the third day that he will rise. The reason why some of them did not almost believe until he showed them evidences. I don't know what those things are in your life, in your home, in your family, maybe concerning your job, concerning your health, concerning your finances, concerning your children, or anything that has to do with you. That even you yourself, you are thinking that it's like it's almost over. I'm not sure there's hope again. Ah, the Lord who has made Christ to come out of the grave. I want us to lift up our voices and speak to him this morning. I say, Lord, anything that is dead in my life, by the power of resurrection, Lord, bring them back to life in the name of Jesus. Anything that is dead in my life, anything that is dead in my home, everything that is dead in my family, in the life of my spouse, in the life of my children, in the life of my loved ones, even in the church of God, every seemingly dead thing, Lord, because of the power of resurrection, bring them back to life. Bring them back to life in the name of Jesus. Let let them receive life and live in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. When Jesus resurrected, even those who would not have believed, let's take Thomas for instance, because Christ showed him the evidence he believed. He said, I believe, my Lord. Let's tell God that even those who are still doubting the existence of Jesus, that the reason for this season, the Lord will minister to them. The Lord will open their eyes. The Lord will reach out to them. The Lord will draw them closer. The Lord will make himself known to them. The Lord will save their soul. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. His word says, let him that thinketh his standard take heed lest he fall. We have come together. We are here because we believe in the Lord. Is there still anyone among us that maybe we see ourselves standing in the presence of God, but we are far away from the Lord? Let us pray and help ourselves this morning and tell God that, oh Lord, you know us best. You are the one. The Bible says you are the one who searches the intent of the heart. We only see faces. We don't know ourselves deep down. Let's tell God that as many as are far away from you, his word says in Luke nineteen ten. That the son of man has come to seek and to save that he's lost. He who left 99 sheep and went in search of one until he got it and brought it home. Let's talk to God this morning. That as many as have gone far away from the Lord, as many as have strayed away, that the Lord will search for them. The Lord will bring them in. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will search for them. The Lord will bring them in. In the name of Jesus. And those of us who are here standing, either those who are fellowshipping at home, virtually, or those of us who are here, that the Lord, deep down, that God knows that this is not still one of mine. Ah, that the Lord will seek for them this morning. That the Lord will make himself manifest to them. That the Lord will bring them back home. Everything and anything that is making us to stray away from the Lord. That the Lord will handle them. The Lord will show his supremacy over them. The Lord will show his lordship over them. And the Lord will help us and bring us back home. And make us his own. And uphold us to the very end. In the name of Jesus. Thank you our dear father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. What us to commit the rest of the program to the Lord's hand, that the Lord who has started with us will see us through to the end. And the remaining blessings that he has for us will not elude us. In the message that he will be sending to us, that the Lord will open our hearts 
to receive the word. If we open our ears to hear, and the Lord will help us to be doers of the word, not just hearers or speakers alone. In the name of Jesus. Every other vessel that the Lord will still use today, that the hand of the Lord will be good upon them. Animate and inanimate to the glory of the name of the Lord. Father, we pray that so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up as we take the congregational hymn. Let us rise up.
today we will not be condemned in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the time to appreciate our God once again. He that has died for our sin and he rose today. And we are here to appreciate him with all that he has given unto us. So this is the time to give our offering. You are here in the congregation. You don't have envelope. Wave your hands so that the ushers will give you one. Wave your hands so that the ushers will give you one. For the benefit for those that are bringing us from home, you can sell it to RCCG Restoration Palace at gmail.com. You can sell your money to the church account, which is RCCG Restoration Palace at gmail.com. Or you want to mail your check to the church address, you can mail it to 2277 Southern Boulevard, Bronx, New York, 10460. The Lord bless you as you comply in the name of Jesus. As we all know that Jesus has died for us and we are here to appreciate him. The Bible says in the book of uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, Give and it shall be given back unto you. And our Lord Jesus Christ has given all that he has given unto us. He died for our sin and what are we giving back to him? It's our money. It's all that he has given back to us. And I pray that as we are going to give this morning God of heaven, we allow his death and his restoration to walk in our life in the name of Jesus. I want you to raise up your offering, your phone that you want to use, or your gadget at home, your computer, anything, lay your hand upon anything that you want to use to sell your money and begin to prophesy to your money, begin to send your money and errands this money. That God of heaven, as I'm giving this token unto you, King of glory, let your death, let your death and your restoration work perfectly in my life in the name of Jesus. Let your death and your restoration work perfectly in my finances in the name of Jesus. King of glory, the blood that you share on the cross, cross of Calvary. King of glory, let it work for my life in the name of Jesus. Let it work for my home in the name of Jesus. Lord, the God of heaven, as I'm giving the tenth of my income, O Lord, ancients of days because of your death and your restoration, I will not experience lack in the name of Jesus. I come against every lackness in my finances in the name of Jesus. God of heaven, this is our declaration this morning, O Lord, and as many that are here in our midst, O Lord, they do not have the reason why we have to give this day, King of glory, O Lord, go and remind them about your death and your restoration and open their inner mind so that they will be able to give, oh Lord, the next time, oh Lord, we have the opportunity to gather in your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I hand over to the choir while they go to give us a danceable song. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us be on our feet to celebrate Jesus. Let us be on our feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
direction of our Lord. Are you celebrating Jesus in the house? Hallelujah. To the Lord in the house. 
trust in God. Hallelujah. I will lift up Jesus. Everybody lift up Jesus. Everybody lift up his name. Oh, Jehovah, I can Omega. Excellent. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, go, go, go. Glory, 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 glory to the Most High God. Amen. We thank God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daddy, King of Glory, this is the offering of your people. Accept it in the name of Jesus. King of Glory, let it be you for your work on this planet earth in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for as many that they don't they want to give, but they don't have at this time. Holy Spirit, go and provide for their needs in the name of Jesus. Father, let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the, All the time. time. Last week, it was Hosanna. And then this week, became crucify him. But the Bible says in the first, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 8, it said, beyond the wisdom of men, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But the wisdom of God is beyond them. And because he died, we live. And that is why this morning, we want to say to the Lord that we thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. It was not easy, but it was worth it. Amen.
My victory is in the blood My confidence is in your name You took the shame so I can shine So much you did without a prize That's why I sing
because of you. What can I keep without your love? What can I say but keep your pain? That's why I sing. the Lord. Uh, we cannot thank God enough for the blessings from the cross plus the resurrection from the grave and the coming of our Lord again. Can we put our hands for Jesus once again? Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we want to welcome our visitors, if any, fellowshipping with us today. Is anybody fellowshipping with us on an Easter Sunday today for the first time? First time, comma, anybody? All right. Praise. Oh, okay, we have one. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we welcome uh, our brother? Let's sing this song for him. You are welcome. We love you and we welcome you into restoration palace. the house of the Lord on a glorious Sunday like today. Uh, please, whoever invited our brother can also come out with him so that we can pray for the two of you. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to thank God for our brother and we also want to bless God for our sister that invited him. Can we just lift up our hands? and pray for them that almighty God who has brought him on an Easter Sunday like today Jehovah Lord we bless him the purpose of his coming to the house of the Lord today shall not be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus all that concerned him including you know the Easter blessings God we give to him in the name of Jesus and we pray for our sister whom the Lord has used even to invite him we pray God we bless her in the name of Jesus we bless her family in the name of Jesus all that concerned her Jehovah we give unto her and a special blessing God has reserved for a ministry like this the Lord we give to you in the name of Jesus Father Lord we thank you glory be to your holy name in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Before our brother, we go and have a seat. We welcome you again in the name of the Lord. Uh, our program for the week on Tuesdays, we do have Bible studies between the hours of 7 and 8.30. That one is in the church here. But on Thursday, which is our faith clinic, 
we do have uh, our prayer on phone between the hours of 7 and also 8.30 as well. And of course, on Sunday like this, by 9 a.m. between 9 and 12, uh, we do have uh, the Bible study and the, uh, the Sunday service. So we welcome you and we pray that the Lord has brought you. We bless you and your blessing shall remain permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. The usher is going to give you the visitor's card. Just make sure you fill it very legibly. Just your basic information so that we can have a way of contacting you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's put our hands together as our brother go to go and have a seat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Uh, I know that our time is uh, already gone. Ordinarily by now we should be running off. But uh, this is even the time we are starting some. But I will try to make it very brief so that uh, God helping me. Uh, by 12 we should uh, be done with the sermon. The Lord will help us in Jesus name. But again we all agree that this is a special day. You know, and in a special day, you should, special, you should expect a special program. You know, even a special service. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So Jehovah Lord is going to bless you the more in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you praises. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Again, we want to thank you for the remembrance of your death your barrier, your resurrection, and even the promise of your coming back again. We thank you because you are very faithful to your word. Everything that happened to you was according to the word of God. We want to appreciate God and want to thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ too. Father, this very morning, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we want to look into your words, Almighty Father, Lord, our prayer is that individually speak to our heart in Jesus' name. Open our hearts to receive your word in the mighty name of Jesus. And will come against any hindrance, any power, any force that may want to hijack the word of God or that may want to, you know, make the word of God of no effect in our life. I pray that the power of life and resurrection destroys such forces in the mighty name of Jesus. Jehovah Lord, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. For in Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Amen. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owe a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. A brand new song is amazing grace. Why Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay? He paid the debt. He paid the debt. I could not pay. I could not pay. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. He didn't owe, and uh, we hold the debt that we could not pay. But we thank God that now we are debt free. Tell your neighbor that you are debt free. Yes. Tell another person say you are debt free. Yes. If something is telling you that, Pastor, are you sure? I see all debt. God will pay it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, the greatest debt is the one Jesus Christ paid for you. And the one that can, not even can, uh, that has paid that debt, the remaining ones shall be paid in the name of Jesus. Uh, again, I wish us 
Mary Easter in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just quickly encourage ourselves from the book of Matthew chapter 27. The last uh, four verses, verses 63 to 66. And also we will read the first seven verses of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 27 verses 63 to 66 and Matthew 28 verses 1 to 7. Matthew 27 verse 63. Saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Who was a deceiver there? Can you see that? They call Jesus Christ a deceiver. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing with stone and setting a watch. Not just only by stone, but also by watch. Verse 20, uh, chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first week, day of the week, came Mary, Magdalene, and other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door. And sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning. And his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him. The keepers did shake. And became as dead men. And the angel answered. And said unto the woman. Fear not ye. For I know that ye seek Jesus. Which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he has said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Yesterday I was reading an article that has to do with the resurrection of Christ by one of the uh, theologians, one of these highly uh, university. And the argument in a nutshell was, Oh, if Jesus was God, then Jesus could not die because God cannot die. But if Jesus, of course, is the son of God, is not God, okay, he died and he rose up again. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You see, that is half truth. Jesus is God. And Jesus died and rose up again. Okay, the argument whether Jesus Christ, if he's God, can he go die? See, who are you to query that? Hello, we help us in Jesus' name. Yes, God cannot die, but if God dies and rose up, who are you to query it? Hello, we help us in Jesus' name. You see, Jesus was both human being and both God. In fact, fully human being and fully God. That is what the study of Christ 
or Christology teaches. Jesus was not half God, half man, not an hybrid. Fully human being and fully God. So because you are fully God, of course, he died, you know, and he rose up again. Fully human being, of course, he felt everything that you are feeling that you may feel. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Looking at this story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the account of Matthew, if you go to other synoptics, you also find you know, the same account substantially. But looking at here, what I just want to encourage us today, thank God, not that Jesus Christ died yesterday or on Friday and he now rose up today or, you know, he's going to Galilee tomorrow. Whatever we are reading now is something that happened many, many years ago. And I know most of us here, if not all of us, we must have experienced, you know, one Easter in the past or even some of us many, many Easter's in the past. So I want this year's Easter, I want you to see it from the perspective of a final victory. We have different kind of victory. But a victory that cannot be challenged or that has been challenged and the challengers failed is what we call a final victory. A final victory is a victory that is settled. That nothing and nothing can unsettle it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. When you look at this very account, thank God, what the enemies of Jesus Christ did, but that we found lacking in Christianity today is remembrance of the word of God. Hebrews in chapter 2 verse 1 says that we should pay attention to those things that we have heard. Lest at any time we should allow them to slip by. The Bible told us about those people. They remember even though they didn't believe Jesus. They remembered his words. That on the third day, I'm going to rise again. So they remember this word in order to make sure that his word did not come to pass. But who we are they to say that the word of God will not come to pass? In your life, the word of God will come to pass in Jesus' name. In your family, it will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. What the Lord has written concerning you will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. So when the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Pilate regarding how to make the graveyard of Jesus secured so that he would not be stolen at night and now, you know, spreading the rumor of a resurrection. They asked Pilate for permission. I like the way Pilate responded. He said, you have a watch, verse 65. Matthew 27, verse 65. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So that if later now, don't begin to say it's Pilate. I, everything that you want to do, go ahead and do it. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, receiving such an instruction from Pilate, I could imagine the kind of soldiers, the kind of watchmen, the kind of whatever to make sure that if Jesus Christ tried to get out, they will kill him again. That, oh, we thought you died, so you fainted. Okay, we're killing you again now. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So they made the place secured. In another words, they were working against the word of God. I prophesied to somebody this morning. 
anybody that is walking against the fulfillment of God in your life, even we put them to shame in the name of Jesus. Bible said, now in chapter 28, that when it was time <laughs> for Jesus to rise up, there was a great earthquake. <laughs> that means even the ground where Jesus was knew that something was about to happen. There was a great earthquake. And not only that, even Bible said from heaven, just the angel of the Lord. You see, God is so powerful that just only one angel. I wonder if there were two, what could have happened? Just only one. You, see, you just go. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And the Bible told us the angel descended from heaven roll the way the stone if you go and read the account in mark in chapter 16 you will see that those women mary magdalene and co who wanted to go to the you know graveyard or sepulchre of jesus christ they said that ah the stone was very great because it was a kind of a stone when you rolled it there was no intention of unroll it again so it was like after it had been rolled, that was just the end. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Only God has the final say. Nobody has an end concerning your life. Nobody has an end concerning your destiny. Nobody has an end concerning your hate. Nobody has an end concerning your situation. Only God has an hand. And that is why we are talking about final victory. Every human being has weakness or is fallible. Only God is infallible. But you know, when the judges or the justices of the Supreme Court, whenever they sit at that very level, they will say that we are infallible. You say we are, you know, infallible because we are finer. And we are finer because we are infallible. That means ordinarily we are human beings like you, but because of the position we are hold now, we cannot make mistake. If we tell you that is where, what the law is, that is the final. You can't go anywhere again. Oh, maybe you want to appeal to God. But here on earth, whatever the United States Supreme Court says, maybe regarding any case that is brought before the court, that's the final. So God has the final say concerning your life. Is there somebody here today that you are being perturbed, you are being troubled, you are being unsettled, you are losing your sleep because of what man has said or has written or has told you this is the case about your life? Just put it aside. Remember today to tell that person or that situation that God has the final say. So therefore they thought rolling the stone indicated finality. Who says so? When God has not spoken. But by the time God spoke in line which is what? He just sent an angel. I could even see the way the angel would just turn just like this. <laughs> and the, the big stone just like, like a wool, just like move away. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible now told us about the best soldier so far that they put there. Eh? What did the Bible say? The Bible says in verse 4, Matthew 28 verse 4, and the fear of him. Ah. My people will say, Toma deba debi eru. Eru ba. When you get to a place of being fearful, even if you have the lion heart of lion, you'll be afraid. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Bible now told us that ah, they were afraid and became as dead men. That will be the portion of your enemy in the name of Jesus. 
oh, we thank God for this church. There are so many of our children, even some of them, they are even over teenagers now, you know, that, hey, if you listen to or hear the story of one, some doctors there, some people, they are some there at a point, they say, please, that one, just remove him. No, that one, no, no, no. That one, you know, I'm telling you now, if you give back to that child, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Hey, who says so when God has not spoken? The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, I want you to remember Easter of this year. Connect it to final victory that God has the final say concerning your life. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, the angel rolled away the stone. And not only that, the Bible even said he sat. After he rolled away the stone, he did what? He sat on it, according to Matthew 28 in verse 2. And rolled by the stone from the door and sat upon it. Do you know the meaning of that? If you have 100 heads, come and challenge me. Hmm. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And that is what God does. When God walks, you see that very sitting is a guarantee. It's a warranty that I have done it and I stand by it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. It's like when a seller sold a land to you. Many of you, maybe when you purchased your property, if you go and look at some of the covenants in the lease, you see something that we call the further assurance. There are about six of them. Well, now there is a further assurance covenant. What that means is that after I sold this property to you in future, per adventure somebody arises and says that this land doesn't belong to the seller. I'm ready to stand by you, or if I have died, my you know, my 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 children, whoever is now succeeding me, they are ready to stand by it. That no, this land belongs to us. So when he sat upon it, it's a guarantee, it's a warranty. That what I've done, I'm waiting for you. Anybody? Anybody want to challenge? But who dare come out? Nobody. Your victory will be final in the mighty name of Jesus. Unchallengeable in the mighty name of Jesus. Unchallengeable in the mighty name of Jesus. Unchallengeable in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Ah, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. My Jesus, talk and sing. Hallelujah, 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 singing because nobody to challenge just like in our own uh, legal system after 30 days if you don't appeal the judgment that means the judgment stays nobody Satan could not say hey I challenge it everything was quiet even those who were dead I believe they remained dead because why? The Lord has spoken. And I want you to know that the victory that Jesus had over Satan, over the world, over, you know, everything related to demons, that same victory the Lord has given unto you. 
So my Jesus conquer Satan, you can turn it to it is my turn to conquer. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It is my turn to swear high. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It is my time of promotion. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It is my time of glory. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It is my time of progress. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It is my time of healing. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Because Jesus conquered the devil. And if Jesus conquered Satan, conquered the devil, then the victory has been given unto you. Now, listen to this. Another thing that I want you to see there because of our time, the status of Jesus changed. You know, they came to look for him where he was yesterday, where he was two, three days ago, but was he still there? No! no. Your status is changing the mighty name of Jesus. Your status is changing the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> um, you know, one of my fathers in the Lord told me, you know, uh, somebody who had known his story, struggling, struggling, struggling here, struggling there, but to the glory of God, by the time that person who made that man of God again, the story had changed. Just like the case of uh, Esau and Jacob. You remember when Jacob met Esau? The last time he saw him was 20 years ago. You know, when Esau was still living from hand to mouth, when he was still a kid, you know, a beggar. So, Jacob thought that was still the situation. I say, hey, my brother, and I know you now, I'm going to get the same place. He said, hold it. I have more than enough. The situation has changed. Yeah? Jacob could not believe it. Hey, with all those wonderful, wonderful curses on you, yes, the Lord has broken them. Now, I got more than enough. So, those who are looking for Jesus in the grave, it's no longer there. The status has changed. The position has changed. The level has changed. So back to the story of that man of God. When that person now came to the address that he gave to him, that come and meet me in the house. When the person got to the front of the house and he looked at not just a house, he has a mansion. He called the man again. I thought you gave me a wrong address. So did you try the address again? Uh, the man said, what did I give to you? So, so number. Hey, hey, ah, he, he just could not believe it. There is somebody's ear. Almighty Father, Lord, you will make your story an amazing thing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> that is what final victory means. The victory that will be permanent. The victory that Satan cannot appeal against. The victory that uh, you remember... Is it in Psalm 126 or 125? Uh, 125. The Bible said, when the Lord turned again, eh, the captivity. Oh, go and read it very well. You know, those who first spoke there were the unbelievers. They came to say, ah, ah. Ah, ah. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Or maybe I've told you this story when I was a student, you know. I mean, I love bike. Even recently, you know, uh, I was thinking about it. I love bike very much because... Even when I was, you know, in my, you know, especially when I was doing my A-levels, if I had two bikes, or the mobilet, a mobilet there, I'm telling you, was, you know, I live for, for a student at that time. So I love bike. So when I was in a, you know, when I was in college, when I was in the UU, I had a bike, a very big one, you know, Kawasaki 200, very big one then. And uh, something happened one Saturday, I can still remember vividly now. I didn't know there was a problem, you know, with the pipe from the tank that went to the carburetor. Anyway, to call the story short, the bike caught fire. And right there at the gate, the main gate, you know, where, of course, I always passed either going out or coming in. The thing just burned to ashes there. 
As if that wasn't and who will help us. Now that they didn't want to help, what are they going to do? You know? So the security men, they say, and they I mean, usually they will call, you know, with the law student, they call us the law, the law. Say the law, hey, can you please gather the remaining? Uh, ah, I say, my God. <laughs> Even the remaining spoke and the tire, they didn't allow me to leave it there. I have to gather everything, you know, I said. Ah. I left with the bike, now returning back without the bike. I was so devastated. Ah, what is this? But you know what? About three months after that time, to the glory of God, even as a student, I was able to buy my first car. Hallelujah. To the extent that now, where am I going? So anytime I now wanted to pass, of course, the gate men, because you, 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 at that time they used to close the gate, so any vehicle that would want to go, you know, they would check the booth, they would check everything. Ah, ah, and they all know me. Say, ah, ah, are you not the one using the right bike? I said to the glory of God, I am. God will change your story in the mighty name of Jesus. So the status of Jesus changed. Where he was kept by the enemy. <laughs> God, you see, when the Lord takes you from a place, usually we take you to a higher place. Oh, I'm speaking prophecy to somebody's life. You see, oh, in fact, that very better job is coming in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe you are ruminating over your breaking relationship. Don't worry. God is bringing a better one in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, maybe you are thinking that what you have lost, listen to this. Uh, did I tell you, maybe I say this so that I can round off, you know. There was a man, when money was money, somebody owed him 800 naira. 800 naira. And big money then. Maybe at that time, I think Naira must even be like, you know, one dollar to maybe 80 cobble to one dollar. So because there was a time Naira was even more powerful than dollar. Yes. So, now, the person didn't want to pay. And the man now went to Orioke, prayer mountain, because of his debtor. Say, ah, what is this? No, God, you have to do something. When he went there, the third day, God just sent one man of God to him. You see, that somebody is here, you are here on this mountain because of a particular issue. Of course, very paramount, you know, on your heart. Don't worry. God said by the time you are going to descend from this mountain, that very problem, you will not see it again. The man believes, they shouted, amen. Shortly after that, prayer going on, prayer going on. Then the last day when the man descended, nothing happened. God, well, I believe your word. By the time we will get home, he just met his old friend who they were together maybe in high school or primary school, but that one had gone to Germany. In the, anyway, that one just he said, oh boy, ah, 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 anyway, you know what? I don't have time because I have to go back to Germany. Uh, I have a, a certain uh, you know, product that I brought and I'm looking for somebody uh, that will help me. Ah, you looking for somebody or you looking for me? I'm ready to tell me the details. To call the long story short, God connected that man to his old classmate, and that one handed a business to him. That by the time the business, you know, brought the reward, the money, the profit. In fact, the man said he didn't even talk about the 800 naira again. <laughs> Can we help us in the mighty name of Jesus? Almighty God. King of glory, we change your status to the extent that that very thing that you are even saying as a problem, you will know it is no problem in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is nothing our God cannot do. So, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is to remind you that God has the final say. Is to remind you that the final victory belongs unto the Lord. And so shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be for me, for every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. Because of your resurrection, almighty Father Lord, I pray for that woman. No more miscarriage for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever conception your, you know, Tommy is going to carry now, ha, it will be to full time in the name of Jesus. 
I pray for that fellow. In fact, your broken relationship is even giving your parents concern. But as the Lord leave it, because of this resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that right man, that right woman is coming your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for that student. Failure will become things of the past in the name of Jesus. Amen. The hand of God will touch your brain Everything that needs to be adjusted will be adjusted for God's glory in the name of Jesus. I pray for that very fellow. Good job. Better than the former one. is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. There's somebody you left a property in Nigeria you didn't want to think about it because you are afraid that you are going to be hurt. But as the Lord lives you will receive a message and it's going to be a good message. Don't think it's a fake one. Don't think it's a scam. As the Lord leave it, what belonged to you but you are afraid to, to ask because you think they might hurt you. Almighty God is returning back to you in the name of Jesus. By reason of this resurrection of year 2024 that we are celebrating, we pray for every member of this church, especially those that for some reason we are not being seeing them. The power of life and resurrection, we bring them back unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorrow will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Mistake or error of another person will not be your lot in the mighty name of Jesus. There are some people here, I don't know. Just raise up your hand if this prayer point has to do with you. There are some people that hold you something. And not that they cannot pay you, but they just refuse to pay you. Just raise up your hand where you are. God will touch their hearts. Bible said that night the king could not sleep. Because the king hold Mordecai. And what he hold Mordecai had not been given to him. <laughs> I pray that this very morning, by the power of life and resurrection, maybe you have been pursuing that your debtor and you are tired of pursuing him or her. Now, things will turn around. It's now your debtor that will be pursuing you to pay you what you owe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your entitlement is coming back unto you. By the reason of Jesus' resurrection, in the mighty name of Jesus. There's somebody here also, in fact, very, very strong. It's in the area of property. It's like there is going, there are some un, 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 unexplainable delay. God said that the power of life and resurrection is removing that delay in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you. Because anyone that comes unto you shall not be cast away. Even other cases that time is not there to mention, Jehovah Lord, I pray, because these ones, they have come unto you, or wherever they are listening to this message, Father, let the power of life and resurrection bring their expected miracles in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jehovah Lord, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, I want to apologize. Our time has just fi 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 like that. He has gone, but it's for good. I believe uh, you will all agree with me. Uh, the next thing that we want to do now uh, I don't know, maybe we should. Uh, okay. uh, actually, I plan that today I want to do the Thanksgiving uh, of my birthday. But uh, let, let me look at our faces again. <laughs> okay, hallelujah. Let's do it, let's do it. Please just uh, pardon us. Uh, the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. All I just want to do, and of course, 
the way we're going to do it is this. All the birthday celebrants for the month of March, you can join me as well. So, Sister Okporu, our children, if they are in the month of uh, March and they are, I mean, they are classic, please, you can bring them down so that we can all do it together and we will ask our daddy David to pray for us. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, while we are, please let the usher or the parents, you know, maybe any of your children that they are upstairs, you can tell their teachers to excuse them. We just want to come to the front. We just want to thank God. And uh, by the grace of God, I believe every um, we'll be doing that once in a month for all the body celebrants uh, going forward. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So we want the, uh, the choir to get ready to give us a very danceable song. Hallelujah. Please, the parents can go upstairs. Guidance, go upstairs. If your children if they have their body this month, let them come down. You know, it's not limited to the adult. Let them come down so that we celebrate together. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He who did pay a debt, he did not owe. I owe a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt I never paid. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owe a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. I sing a new brand song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus pay a debt that could never pay. Amen. I believe they are here because of our time. So that I will hand over to the choir. We will dance from the entrance grade as we normally do. And after that, I will ask Daddy David to pray for us.
Father, we want to thank you. Jehovah God, we want to thank you for your love, for your kindness towards mankind. We thank you, Father Lord, for your resurrection today. Father, we give you all the glory, accept our thank in Jesus' name. Amen. For counting us worthy, even to be dancing before you at this particular day. Father, we say glory be to your name. Amen. Accept our thank in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, Lord, I am praying for your servant, Jehovah God, whom you have called, whom you have ordained. I pray that the next year will be better than this in the mighty name of Jesus. Every year you'll be going better in the name of Jesus. And I pray that God will count you among those who will succeed, who have succeeded in the ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that the enemy has planned towards you, your family, and your ministry, I stand in the name of Jesus that is above every other name. Through the resurrection power, I pray and nullify such power in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for all our mommy that are celebrating today. Sadness will not mix with your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Next year, you get better in the mighty name of Jesus. Every year, you get better in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you lay your hands in this your new year, God will prosper it in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that concerns you, God will perfect it in the name of Jesus. King of glory, I pray for all our children. Enemy will not mar your future. In the name of Jesus. Land of America will not swallow your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, I pray that God will take you to your destiny in the name of Jesus. Either the enemy like it or not, you fulfill your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Your children, uh, uh, your mother, your father will not mourn over you. In the name of Jesus. You continue to grow in the wisdom and in the admonition of Christ in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to your name. Father, as we are rejoicing today, Jehovah God, enemy will not, will not uh, uh, put sadness into our joy in the name of Jesus. By this time next month, Lord, we will stand again to celebrate those who are, who are having their bad day. And the joy, our joy will remain full in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Glory be to your name. Once again, Lord, I pray for your servant. Everything that concerns you, God will perfect it in the mighty name of Jesus. You will see your children, children. You will not die young. You started well, you finished well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatsoever you lay your hands, God will prosper it in Jesus' name. The Lord will expand your coast in the mighty name of Jesus. You will continue to grow higher and higher in the mighty name of Jesus. Your enemy will be put to shame. All glory will be to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. offerings together with every hand that has uh, put their thanksgiving offering there in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. 
So again, we want to thank you for your patience. And uh, our prayer is that Almighty God, as we continue in the spirit of uh, uh, Easter, uh, tomorrow uh, we're going to Galilee. Hallelujah. Uh, you can Galilee that in your house. That's okay. But uh, don't forget, please, tonight, I don't know if it was announced. Uh, tonight by 11, okay, 11 p.m., please, uh, we are going to have the second day of our revival. Don't miss it. And it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And please, for uh, our outgoing escorts, please, this is very important. Our outgoing escorts, men, women, and yasin. Please, by the special grace of God, make yourself available next week Sunday. And if for any reason anyone is not around, uh, we are going to do the official handing over and we pray for you and we present you with your gift in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I hand over to Pastor Okay for the conclusion. There's nothing more to say or do but to pray for our Father in the Lord. So let's, I mean, we have done everything. Let's pray for our Father in the Lord. Let us thank God for his life once again, for all his work tirelessly. And let's ask God to continually renew his strength in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that every prayer that has been raised for him today will work in his life in the mighty name of Jesus. And it shall be well with him. And pray for yourself too. That everything you have received today. The resurrection day of Jesus Christ. That they will work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a lost and found. Can you please look up lost and found. Oh, this uh, wedding, wedding post. And I'm sure there's money in it. So if you are the owner, see Mommy Olufemi, please. With your ID card. Let's rise up as we share the grace in fellowship. One, two, go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. To our first time visitor, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our watchword for today and the last day is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly that day all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And may that grace continually follow us, be with us, dwell with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us go in peace and the peace of the Lord be with us. Amen. All workers, please come to the altar. Heledu Mario, Bao, Kachuba Kibashe, Ipalo Yekash.